good evening, um, brethren. I, I, I greet you all. It's me again. Uh, thank you for having me. We've been talking about sexual related matters and men and all of that. Um, and for some reason, God has just impressed it in my heart to talk briefly in like less than 10 minutes about this topic, gifted but lost in addiction. It's just going to sum up most of some of the things that we are speaking about, especially on the issue of um, the addiction. Yesterday I spoke a bit on um, masturbation and pornography, and I spoke about it as one of the issues that one you know, can actually find themselves in and the challenges that any most young people can find themselves in because studies have shown that it's as much as 86% of men actually consume pornography. Um, so, so it's something that is there and something that we need to talk about. So gift that but lost in, in, in an addiction is actually based on the scripture. Uh, the book of Luke chapter 15 verse 11 talks about the prodigal son that went to his father. So his son goes to the father and says, give me what's mine. And the father gives him what he what was his. Uh, and the Bible says two or three days later, he goes and goes away to a far, far country. Um, so his father gave him the gifts. His father gave him the inheritance. And then he took the gifts and then went to a far country. And when you read the story further, you realize that he gets to a far country. He squanders all of the gifts and the talents and everything that the father gave him. And, you know, you learn later on that the, the brother to the prodigal son says, you have squandered all your wealth in gales and parting. So basically, that's where the topic of gifted but lost in addiction comes in to say, we've got a lot of young people uh, to be that, um, you know, whether married or not, that are gifted in, 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 in whatever gifts that they have, but they're really lost in addictions. And, and, and addiction is a very serious issue because studies have shown that one in three people are dealing with an addiction, one in three. So basically, if you're in a room with three people, one of them, if it's not you, is actually dealing with an addiction. So that's a very serious matter. <laughs> and then especially when we are talking about sexual addictions and all of that. So we spoke yesterday about pornography and masturbation as one of those things. So I just want to talk about that briefly to say, we've got a lot of young people that are actually really gifted, really talented, but they're lost in their lost in their addictions, right? So addiction is defined in this case as having no control over something. You know, you're having no control over doing taking or even using something to a point where it actually causes you to have really serious problems. So how do you know that you are addicted as a young person? Briefly, if you know that you're addicted when, um, you know, whatever that, um, you know, you are consuming, um, then it's starting to actually change your social life. That is basically, it is, you know, it changes how you interact with people in the society, you know. So, and, and I mean, that, that, that behavior is seeking out some situations that are encouraging it. So basically, you know that you are addicted to something when socially you are changing in a sense that you want to find yourself in a space where you feed off that addiction. Number two, you know that you are addicted when there is behavioral change. So basically, um, especially when there is a highest level of secrecy that you find yourself then, you know, exposed to as a young person or that, that you are, you know, leaning towards to. When you find yourself too much secretive as a young person or as a, you know, as, as, as a person, you know, simply because there's something that you are dealing with. Because, I mean, addiction thrives in secrecy. So if you have to find yourself isolating or even lying and, and coming up with lies this and the other just to cover up, you know, that behavior, it means that you are now addicted to that particular behavior. You know you are addicted when there is changes that are health related, you know. Um, yesterday I spoke about the masturbation. People who are, like, who are addicted to masturbation, they masturbate so much that actually it even causes them to have pain. Either they've got your pelvic floor pain and they're coming and complaining about groin pain, this, that, and the other. Somebody, I think about two days ago, may ask about, you know, is masturbating four times a day a problem? I mean, that, 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 that can be debated to say it's becoming an issue, you know, especially when it's starting to have health related problems you know um you know you're addicted when it now you, you are starting to having changes that are relating to your personality and lastly you know that you are addicted when you are starting to have very unrealistic a poor assessment of the pros and cons of that addiction so if you cannot judge you know that um whatever that you are addicted to or whatever whatever substance or behavior that you are doing is actually you know having a lot of disadvantages and advantages 
and you can't judge that, then it means you are really, really starting to get addicted. But that's not, um, you know, um, there's hope at the end of the day. There is a bum in the land of Gilead to those who read the word of God. So I just want to talk about in the next five minutes, just five steps quickly on how then to deal with an addiction. Because it's, I mean, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is for you to have all the gifts and the talents like a prodigal son, but wasting them away in addiction. So number one, five steps to deal with an addiction. I mean, this is just me loosely speaking and then passing, right? We can deal about it some other time. Number one, admit that there is a problem. The problem is that we don't admit that there's a problem, right? We want to spiritualize everything. So admit that you've got a problem, especially when it comes to the issue of maybe pornography addiction or masturbation addiction. Admit that there is an issue. The only way David can conquer Goliath is for him to acknowledge that there is a giant in front of him. And the problem is that we want to conquer our Goliath but we don't want to acknowledge their presence, right? So admit that there's a problem. Don't spiritualize it and even say, no, I, I, you've got a problem, you've got a challenge, you've got an addiction. So admit that there is an issue and it's causing you to have problems. So deal with it and then conquer it, right? Because that's the only way you can actually address the matter. Number two, reflect on your addiction. When you read on the story of the prodigal son, the Bible says at some point he said to himself, you know, I will go back to my father and I will say to my father, I have sinned against heaven and you, you know, do no longer call me one of your sons, make me one of your servants. So he was reflecting on his behavior. He was reflecting um, on his life. So it's very much important for you to have a conversation with yourself. It is high time for you to actually sit down and reflect on your own addiction as a young person to say, you know what, I have got a problem. And number two, this problem has cost me one, two, three, and four. So you need to calculate the cost and the things that you have lost due to the addiction that you have. Reflect on your addiction. What is it that it has cost you? If it is costing you peace, it is causing you joy, it is causing you self-confidence, it is causing you peace of mind and all of that, it is really costing you a lot. Right. So at some point, addiction causes people, especially when it comes to pornography and masturbation, it causes them their self-esteem. It causes them their money, you know, because they spend time and money on, on watching pornography and consuming pornography and all of that. So it causes them their social life, their spiritual life. You don't even have confidence to come and stand in front of people and talk to them because you know that you are suffering and you are dealing with an addiction. So number two, reflect on your addiction. Number three, identify your triggers. This is, this is very important. Identify your triggers. The only way to deal with an addiction, one of the other ways, is for you to really identify what triggers the addiction, right? If isolation triggers the... I was so practical with those young people today, and I said to them, if staying alone and being isolated triggers you to actually masturbate and watch pornography, then you'd rather keep yourself busy. Or do something like... If having data on your phone is the one that's causing you to actually browse through ama black sites and all these wrong sites and it feeds off you know you are feeding off pornography and masturbation and all of that and it's a problem for you then you would rather identify that and make sure that you put measures in place to um, run away from such things so identify your triggers you know sometimes we talk about these things and we talk about them light or we don't even talk about them at all you know if our sister yellow bones are triggering you as a brother you are a man that is not married and yellow bones, you know, or a sister that is a yellow bone is triggering you. So stop playing with fire. That's what the Bible says. You can't take a imbaula and put it on your bosom and not burn. You will burn. <laughs> and right. So don't play with fire. Identify your triggers, whether it's stress, it's uncomfortable emotions, it's environmental cues or social isolation. Be very much aware what triggers you. That is the best thing you can ever do. No, when I have this thing, it will trigger me to relapse and go back to my addiction. Number four, we say change your environment. I mean, this sounds easier, but it's not as easy as it sounds. But, you know, change your environment, meaning that you cannot continue staying with the same crowd of people, doing the same things that you used to do, that feeds, you know, that makes you to feed off of the addiction, that makes you to relapse to the addiction. So change your, 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 your habits, your daily habits, change your environment the best way you can. You can't be chilling with, if alcohol, you're addicted to alcohol and it's causing you problems or, or smoke, 
smoking or you're happy or whatever the case might be. You can't be chilling with people that are just triggering you in the environment that enables the behavior. So number four, we are saying change your environment. And number five, seek help. Okay, this is the last one. You need to seek help. Um, when it comes to the issue of addiction, it can be spiritual. It can have a hold on you. So the only way to deal with it is for you to actually really confront it. Seek help. Cry out and say, I've got a problem. I've got an issue. Bakono, Dr. Eugene Tiseko in your church that you can reach out to and say, hey, brother, help me, you know, and I see a lot of men on socials where I speak that are reaching out to me to say, listen, my guy, I've got a problem here, doc. I've got a problem here. I've got a problem there. So please help me. So I appreciate when especially men, you know, cry out and say, I am in need of something, right? I am in need of help. I need professional help so that we can pray for you, pray with you, um, you know, and, and, and you, know, um, you know, refer you to even therapists. I, I have referred a lot of men that are addicted to pornography and masturbation to, I mean, I, you hear stories that are shocking to me. People that are saying, I even masturbate and sedans in at work. You know, I go to the bathroom and do it. It is affecting me. It is affecting my sex life. I cannot enjoy intimacy with my wife because I am addicted to pornography. So we talk about these things. Sometimes we talk about them light and we don't talk about the extent to which they can actually harm, you know, um, relationships and all of that. You know, and I've heard men who cry out and say, I really have a problem and I need help. Right? And I've referred them to even ama thera ama therapies that can actually rehabilitate them and give them a therapy. So those are the five things that you can do to help you deal with addiction. You cannot afford to be gifted but lost in addictions. Thanks to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And to those that just joined us, welcome. Thank you so much again, Mabunduli, for that. It says, for you to deal with addiction, admit that there is a problem. Reflect on the addiction. Identify your triggers. Change your environment. And, of course, seek help. Allow me to please um, have U, Dr. Detego also join in the call, unmuting and showing his video, so that we can start off with the question and answer session. Yeah. Um, good evening, everyone. Yeah, but today I'm, I'm here just having some network issues, but yeah, um, I'm here and uh, thank you again for for this opportunity to be um, sharing this platform with you and uh, your listeners. Um, yeah, I think we can go ahead with the q and A's. I I didn't prepare anything, but um, somebody on on Tuesday had asked me about um, the Klinefelter syndrome and I said I was going to uh, check out something on the genetic disorders. I don't know if the person is still here so that um, I go ahead and explain it or we'll just uh, explain it as we go through the Q&A. No, I think, I think you can start with that. That's okay. Oh, okay, so um, so a Klinefelter syndrome, uh, oh, basically, so let me just go through um, some of the genetic disorders that um, decrease um, male reproduction or uh, causes of uh, male infertility. So amongst um, the top five, we, I'm just going to mention two. So we have the Klinefelter syndrome, which is a genetic disorder, and it is non-inherited, so which means it's something that happens um, at random. Um, so what will happen is that a male will have Okay, so let's start here. So genetically speaking, a normal male will have XY um, genes and then a female will have XX genes. Those are codes for male and female respectively. So in Klinefelter syndrome, a man will have XXY genes. So which means they have an extra chromosome for their um, uh, uh, gonadas or their, uh, their sexuality. So then the problem becomes that they have an override of the female genes over the male genes, even though they appear to be male, but they are in need of uh, male hormones. So most of these men naturally cannot conceive, uh, but through hormonal therapy, they can conceive. Um, and then the second group of people with genetic disorders would be your hermaphrodites. Um, so uh, hermaphroditism is a 
thing that is common in animals but then there have been uh, um, cases whereby humans have been hermaphrodite so basically hermaphrodite is a a man with a penis but when you look inside they have ovaries or it's a female with a vagina and a uterus but they have balls right so what happens in these two cases is that there's a lack of um hormones so if there's a lack of or imbalance not a lack but an imbalance because it's uh uh it's called intersex because this one organism has um two reproductive organs so there will be one that is dominant and one that is weak but since both of them are available um it makes it hard for these people to to conceive and then the third group would be um the triple um triple x um syndrome uh, when you go to google don't type don't type xxx syndrome it's going to show other things just um write triple x and then if you write it as triple x you will see uh, uh what i'm talking about so basically the triple x syndrome is similar to clean filter um whereby it, it mostly affects females so this female person will have um instead of having xx they will have um xy right so <clears throat> if they have an an extra x it means they will have um an extra they will have an abnormality in their sexuality so if they have if they have a, a, a an abnormality in their sexuality or in their sexual representation then it means it will become um difficult for them to to conceive just like uh, i mentioned before with Kleinefeld, whereby people have um, uh, an extra X chromosome. So the other two, uh, or the remaining groups then would be um, a female. Remember I said a normal female will have XX and a normal male will have XY, right? So you have situations whereby a female has an XY chromosome and then a male has um, an XX, right? So those ones are called uh, pure gonadal dysgenesias or a soya syndrome, whereby person at birth, they will have um, uh, normal female genitalia, right? This is the, the, the X, XY female. They will have a perfectly normal uh, female genitalia, but then <clears throat> they will have a normal female development, right? So they will um, have, uh, when they get to puberty, they will have breasts growing, they will go through their menstrual cycles, and then um, they can also conceive through uh, hormonal therapy, right? So the same uh, occurs with an XX male. So these two groups, basically what it means is that it's a fully fleshed male with um, genes of a female, or a fully fleshed male with genes of a female. So now when the body tries to repro uh, to produce hormones or whatever, uh, when it tries to metabolize anything that is needed by the body, it does it as if it was a female body or as if it was a male body in a female, you see. So the last one is a, a tenor syndrome, um, which affects only females, right? So the last, these other three, I left them uh, at the bottom just to include them because we also have females may be this who are listening and may be interested in knowing so the tenor syndrome affects only females whereby um they have um a missing x chromosome so instead of a female being xx they, they will be x right so those people are um, um generally short in stature and then they have like irregular menstrual cycles and they have like scanty periods and then they also have uh, heart problems um so they have a lot of medical problems that uh, develop uh, uh, throughout the course of their lives. And then and with them, it is hormonal therapy because if they are missing one X, then it means some of their reproductive organs are not uh, developed, right? So um, a cleaner filter can be compared to a tenor. And then the X male, um, the XX male and the XX uh, female can be compared. And then the other one would be hermaphroditism, which just stands alone. I think that uh, sums it up uh, very Thank well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I may not be able to remember the, the medical terms, but if there is one thing that I'm getting in that, uh, I hope that many of us can start applying 
is that we need to be really kind. Um, just because somebody has a male genitalia, it doesn't mean that they feel fully confident in being um, a man, considering how we would like to define what a man is. So there are so many genetic influences how a person is built underneath that we do not understand. So when we see people who are choosing maybe a, a homosexual life, and I'm not saying that we, we should now start advocating for it, but I'm saying that we should be more careful um, because there are people that are dealing with things that we do not know underneath their, um, their clothing. So it's very important that we become a little bit kinder and more gracious